Okay, in this video we're gonna look at a hint and then a solution to problem A1 from the 1999 Putnam. So let's look at the statement of the problem first. So we wanna find polynomials, if they exist, f of x, g of x, and h of x, such that if you take the absolute value of f minus the absolute value of g, plus h, which is outside of absolute values, you get the following piecewise function. So you get negative one if x is less than negative one, you get three x plus two if x is between negative one and zero, and you get negative two x plus two if x is bigger than zero. Okay, so here's our following hint. So the first two are really just two like problem solving tools that um, are really good to keep in mind if you're preparing for uh, such a math competition like the Putnam, and that is you can exhibit the maximum of two things, R and S, in terms of one half times the quantity R plus S plus the absolute value of R minus S. So let's just see why that works. So notice if R if R is bigger than S, then R equals the maximum of R and S, which is equal to one half R plus S, and then if R is bigger than S, then the absolute value of R and S is actually R minus S. And so notice the S's cancel, and you get one half two R, in other words, you get R. So in fact, uh, this works. And then if R is less than S, the same kind of thing happens, except these switch around when you uh, remove the absolute values, so the R's cancel instead of the S's canceling. And then similarly, we've got this formula for the minimum. So the minimum of R and S is one half the absolute value of R plus S minus uh, the absolute value of R and S. R minus S. And then I just want to point out that this is the same thing as negative the maximum of minus R minus S. So I'm not sure that we're going to use that, but that's important to know. And then um, w another thing to do is using these two tricks, um, we can read into the problem to get a hint for what the solution should look like. So our goal, in other words, our goal function, which is this right-hand side, has an absolute value of f minus an absolute value in, of g in it. So notice the maximum gives you an added absolute value and the minimum gives you a subtracted absolute value. So what this tells you is that we should probably decompose this as the maximum of two things who knows what they are, plus the minimum of two things. And these are not necessarily the same two things. So make, let's make these like yellow entries. Okay, so now that we've looked at these hints, maybe pause the video and give it a go, and then we'll pick back up and look at the solution. Okay, so we just looked at some hints and tools for solving this problem, and I've reminded ourselves of these things up here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is maybe see what we can do with this um, piecewise function. So I just want to look at um, it in two pieces um, to get a feel for what's going on here. So notice if we take minus 1, where x is less than negative 1, and then 3x plus 2, where x is between uh, negative 1 and 0. So notice, um, if you plug in all numbers between negative 1 and 0 into 3x plus 2, um, 3x plus 2 is going to be bigger than negative 1 on this interval. So let's maybe notice this real quick. So notice, on the interval negative 1 to 0, 3x plus 2 is bigger than negative 1. Maybe I should put bigger than or equal to negative 1. So what that tells us is that 3x plus 2 is equal to the maximum of um, 3x plus 2 and negative 1 on this interval. Great. And then likewise, another note is that um, for x less than negative 1, we have 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 1, which tells us that negative 1 is equal to the maximum of uh, 3x plus 2 and negative 1 on this interval.
So in other words, we can decompose this whole thing into a maximum function. So notice this is going to be the maximum of um, negative 1 and 3x plus 2. So this works for x less than or equal to 0. So that's where that is good. Okay, great. So uh, now let's go ahead and I'll erase uh, this part of the board and then we'll do the same kind of thing on these two functions. So we just noticed that we could write this part of the piecewise function as a maximum function, so that's good to know. Now let's look at this part of the piecewise function. So in other words, we want to look at 3x plus 2, where x is between uh, negative 1 and 0, and then negative 2x plus 2, where x is bigger than 0. So let's go ahead and see what's happening on this closed interval first. So on um, negative 1 to 0, so notice that these two uh, functions, they're lines, and they cross at x equals 0. That's pretty easy to see. But since they're lines, they only cross once. So that means we can figure out which one is uh, bigger or smaller to the right or left of 0 just by plugging it in a test point. So let's choose a test point of negative 1. If we plug negative 1 into this, we're going to get negative 1. We'll get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. If we plug negative 1 into this, we'll get 3. So that means this one is bigger. So on the interval negative 1 to 0, it's pretty Pretty easy to see that we have 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so we can do that again by uh, finding a test point and checking that, which tells us that 3x plus 2 is equal to the minimum of 3x plus 2 and negative 2x plus 2. Great. So now uh, let's go ahead and see what's happening um, on the interval uh, 0 to infinity. So in other words, when x is bigger than 0, this guy is clearly going to take over because notice we're multiplying by a positive number, positive 3, instead of a negative number, negative 2. So we're clearly going to have uh, 3x plus 2 is bigger than or equal to negative uh, 2x plus 2. And that's actually a strict inequality. Okay, great, which tells us that negative 2x plus 2 is equal to the minimum of 3x plus 2, negative 2x plus 2. Now, putting these two facts together, that tells us that we can write this piecewise function as the minimum of 3x plus 2 and negative 2x plus 2. And here we have uh, x is bigger than or equal to negative 1. So it stands to reason that maybe we could just add this maximum function to this minimum function and we would achieve this whole thing. And uh, let's go ahead and check to see that'll happen. I'll clean up the board and then uh, we will do that. So on the last board, we argued that uh, this first maximum function gave us this piecewise part defined by these first two functions, these upper two, and this minimum function here gave us the piecewise portion defined by the bottom two. So now we're making this claim, which is really just a guess, that maybe we could add them together and we could get the piecewise function defined by all three. And I think this will either be true or we'll get close enough that we can fix it really, really easily. And so in order to prove that this left-hand side equals the right-hand side, all we need to do is test on each of these um, sub-portions of the real number line. So in other words, we need to look at what's happening when x is less than negative 1 first, what's happening between negative 1 and 0 next, and then what's happening to the right of 0 finally. So let's look at what's happening to the left of negative 1. So notice, to the left of negative 1, we have 3x plus 2 is less than negative 1. And so that's clear because they're equal at negative 1. So if you, have, you plug a smaller number in, this thing is going to be smaller. And we also have that 3x plus 2 is less than uh, negative 2x plus 2.
Okay, so what that tells us is that when we plug in a number that is smaller than negative one, from this first portion, we're gonna get negative one, and then from this second portion, we're gonna get uh, 3x plus two. So notice this is not equal to negative one, which was our goal. We're off by a 3x plus two, but I don't think this is gonna be a problem. Let's just hang on to that um, for a little bit later, and I think we're gonna be able to fix it. So now let's see what's happening when x is between negative one and zero. So when x is between negative one and zero, we have uh, 3x plus two, is bigger than negative one. And we also have three x plus two is less than negative two x plus two. So that means from this first maximum, we're gonna take out the three uh, x plus two because we're gonna take out the bigger one. And then from this minimum, we're gonna take out three uh, x plus two as well because we're gonna take out the smaller one, great. But now what we should be getting is 3x plus 2, but then again, we're off by a 3x plus 2. So we have this extra 3x plus 2 term. So I, can think, I think you can see where we're going. Here we were off by a 3x plus 2. Here we were off by a 3x plus 2. So now let's see what's happening when x is bigger than 0. So when x is bigger than 0, uh, 3x plus 2 is bigger than negative 1 and 3x plus 2 is bigger than negative 2x plus 2, okay? So that means from this maximum function, we're gonna get a 3x plus 2 because it's gonna take out the bigger one. And then from this minimum function, we're going to get a uh, negative 2x plus 2 because we're gonna get a smaller function. Great, but our goal is to have minus two x plus two, but we almost have that. We just have a leftover three x plus two. So notice this sum doesn't work. That does not achieve this piecewise function over here, but it almost does. If we subtract a three x plus two from this, it will achieve this piecewise function because in all of the regions of the line that we're interested in, it differed by a three x plus two. So so our claim, instead of being this max plus this min um, is equal to this piecewise function, it's this max plus this min minus a 3x plus 2 is equal to this piecewise function. And now we can see that that works exactly because if we were re to redo these calculations, all of these guys would disappear and we would have what we need. Okay, so that means uh, this claim has been verified, which means all that's left to do is to rewrite our max and our min using this formula up here. So let's do that. So we have this claim, which we verified after playing around with it for a little bit. And notice this is our goal. And so we can use these tools in order to decompose this thing into the correct type of parts. So notice this maximum can be written as one half of negative one plus three X plus two plus the absolute value of uh, negative one minus three X plus two. But I'm gonna do this as three X plus plus three. In other words, three X plus two minus a negative one because it just looks a little nicer. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline all of this in pink to know that it's coming from this portion right here. Okay, great. And then our minimum is going to be three uh, X plus two um, minus two X plus two. So that's R plus S. I need a half out here. And then it's gonna be minus the absolute value of their difference, but notice their difference is equal to five X. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm gonna go ahead and underline that in blue so we know where that's coming from. And then finally, we have minus three X plus two outside of the whole thing. And so this equals this right-hand side goal, um, which I'll go ahead and underline in purple. Okay, so now what we need to do is simplify this. Uh, so let's see what we get when we do that. So notice uh, this is going to turn into 3x plus 1, okay? And then this right here is going to turn into x plus 4. Okay, great. 
And then let's see what we have left. So this is going to give us uh, 3 halves x plus half plus half times the absolute value of 3x plus 3. So that's what we get for that red part. And then we're going to have plus a half x plus 2. So that's what we get from there. Um, minus a half times the absolute value of 5x and then minus 3x minus 2 and so that's going to be equal to our right hand side which, are, which is our goal. So now let's see if we can put all of this together nicely. So, so notice we have 3 halves x plus 1 half x so that's going to be 4 halves x or 2x minus 3x so that's going to give us a negative x. So that's from combining all the x terms. And then we have 1 half plus 2 minus 2, so that's going to be plus a half. Good. And then I can bring this half inside here, so that's going to be plus the absolute value of 3x plus 3 over 2, and then minus the absolute value of 5x over 2, and that's going to be equal to the right-hand side. And so, in terms of our original question, this is playing the role of f of x, this is playing the role of g of x, and this is playing the role of h of x because it's outside of the absolute values. Great, so we've solved the problem.